Hey, what's going on? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the Credit Repair Shop .com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the FTC and the, the FTC and the CFPV, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, submits an amicus brief de defending consumers' ability to dispute inaccurate items on credit reports. Now, just in case you haven't seen this, this is this was actually released today. This is not an old story. This is. Uh, a court case in the U.S. Court of Appeals, 3rd District, and the case is Ingram versus Experian. So now, just to give you a little breakdown uh, about what this, this is, is this individual was a victim of, of ID theft. This individual submitted a dispute directly with, it was Comcast, and for some reason, well, I, I could, I, I won't even say some reason because I want to be more specific for you. Submitted a dispute with Comcast for identity theft fraud that it was not his account. But it, this is something that a lot of people seem to miss and make a mistake when dealing with ID theft. The companies will usually, most of the time, I would say nine times out of 10, they're going to send you documents for ID theft. Like if you're claiming ID theft with a company, they're going to send you their documents. They're going to say, okay, we believe you, but we want it on our documentation. This is our process. We have a right to have our own process. And if you don't submit it through th with their documents, filling out their forms and everything, people get upset about doing it because they're like, I already filled out forms. I've already done a police report. I've done all of this stuff. They want it done their way. If you don't do it their way, they're going to disregard it. So we have a case right here where it was proven ID theft and the individual, uh, the information was not removed from the individual's credit report. And it was, it was solely based on him not providing the uh, documentation the way that Comcast wanted it submitted. So now Comcast sells it to a debt collection company because we all know that communications companies, cell phones and all of them, they will end up selling off their debt. They don't, they're not collection companies and they're not in the business of collecting debt. So mm -hmm. they, they sold it to a debt collection company. The individual uh, ended up uh, doing a dispute with the credit reporting agencies, TransUnion, Equifax and Experian, and came around and did a direct uh, dispute to the collection agency. Now, this is where all of the stuff got all mixed up and what made the whole court case go down, is that number one, the individual is like, hey, I know that this account is not mine, and why are you not taking this off my credit reports? Why are you disregarding my disputes for this? Because according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you have a right to validate any collection that a third party debt collector sends to you. What they said is that, okay, it's ID theft, but we sent you that information and you can't sue us for doing that because we didn't know. We didn't know that this information was ID theft. We just bought this account, even though when they buy the accounts, they assume responsibility for those accounts. That's why when you are doing a validation on accounts, you should always ask them, do they have any documentation proving that 100% of the portfolio that they purchased is 100% accurate? So uh, the individual got very upset because they're like, I'm a victim of ID theft. They're not taking it off. I dispute it directly with the uh, company. I dispute it with the furniture. I dispute it with the credit reporting agency. So the whole case went down because the... Um, the uh, Credit, I mean, the, the uh, collection agencies stated that they should not have to uh, do a validation on this debt when it was passed down from the original creditor. That if you've sent information to the original creditor and the original creditor kept, kept the information on, we assume the debt and we assume the debt is 100% valid. So this actually went into a, a complete court case where there was actually a ruling that stated uh, they don't have to do, they don't have to, uh, 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 if, if someone says, hey, uh, I want this to be investigated, that they could actually disregard 
certain investigations, if they deem that it's frivolous, something that they shouldn't believe, like what is frivolous? Just because you send it in, they could say because you sent it in twice, that's frivolous. So a whole court case was built up around this. And so I'm going to, let me tell you some of the things that's on here. So it says here, um, the FTC and the CFPV amicus brief relates to the case involved, a request made by a consumer to a furnisher, Comcast Communications, to remove an account from his credit report that was listed as delinquent. The consumer reported to Comcast that he was a victim of ID theft and, and did not open the account. So already did not open the account. Comcast rejected this claim and said that the consumer failed to submit proof of his identity theft and later referred the matter to a debt collector. That's where the proof, and this goes over the head of a lot of people, even over the head of credit repair companies, because when they say submit proof, this is what that means. Let me define proof. I just said it earlier. They want it done on their documents or they're going to disregard it. This individual proved by the way that he thought it was, which a police report and a document stating that he was a victim of ID theft, but that wasn't good enough. So now uh, the consumer later made what is considered an indirect dispute by disputing the delinquent account with the credit reporting agency's experience, agency experience, which sent the dispute to the debt collector as the furnisher of the inaccurate information. Debt collector is saying, hey, we bought this debt, we assume it's accurate, and uh, we, we're not going to do anything about it. You know, you can't blame us. So when every when everything went down, the debt collection company said, you can't blame us. We got it from Comcast. We bought the debt from Comcast. And we, uh, even though they assume full responsibility, they're saying that they don't have to assume, assume the responsibility of this guy taking them to court because they didn't know anything about what was going on before. Because when they bought the debt, everything was supposed to be accurate. So, uh in the response to litigation from the consumer, the lower court ruled in favor of the debt collector saying that the furnisher only is obligated to investigate bona fide indirect disputes that may therefore decline to investigate any dispute it deems frivolous. Now, that's what I'm saying. They're trying to uh, weasel their way out of the Fair, debt, or the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, the FTC and the CFPV, however, say that the lower court Errored arguing in their brief that furnishers are required to investigate. The brief argues that there is nothing in the text of the Fair Credit Reporting Act that suggests that a furnisher can choose not to investigate indirect disputes if it deems uh, to be not bona fide. The statutory text is, is ambiguous. Furnishers must investigate all indirect disputes according to the brief. Uh, consumers would be left in the dark under the FCRA Fair Credit Reporting Act. Consumers are entitled to be notified about the outcome of disputes and they must be given the opportunity to address any problems with their dispute claims. The district court rules ruling would circumvent those requirements, leaving consumers in the dark and undercutting a central remedy under the Fair Credit Reporting Act that ensures consumers are able to dispute and correct inaccurate information on the credit reports. Additionally, exceptions is unnecessary. The exceptions created by the lower court decision is unnecessary because furnishers are already protected in other ways from having to investigate a frivolous dispute. For example, the Fair Credit Reporting Act requires credit reporting agencies to determine if the dispute is frivolous before forwarding a document to the furnisher. The commission voted five to zero to file the amicus brief with the CFPV. So I just wanted to alert you to what's going down. These are uh, different uh, uh, cases that have came down that have made it more difficult to repair credit. Uh, what I've always said is that it's going to always take work. If you're willing to put in the work or you work with a company like ours that's willing to put in the work, it will get done. There's different, uh, different ways, different paths to success. Not every situation is the same. Not every file is the same. Not every individual's 
case is the same. Just like this case here, you see it right in front of you. The, the gentleman had ID theft, legitimate 